Greetings, fellow Gorehounds, and welcome back to a Blood Splatter vlog. I'm the Horror Guru. And I'm Count Jacula. And on our list of movies we're watching during quarantine that we recommend to you, we recently just watched Patchwork, which is the uh, previous film from the director of Tragedy Girls. Oh. It's the film they made right before that. Um, uh, and carries a lot of themes from Tragedy Girls, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. this director <laughs> seems to have a thing for... Groups of young women. Yes, like uh, uh, homicidal female friendships seem yes. to be his yeah. forte. <laughs> um, so this movie is, basically the premise of this movie is three women wake up patched, like stitched together in the same body. Yeah, so they're like three girls stitched into one Frankenstein monster. Yeah. Um, and it's basically them trying to piece together what the fuck happened to them the, the night before that caused them to become this thing and who's responsible and getting revenge on them. Yeah. So it's kind of like, it's kind of, it's got a little bit of Frankenstein, a little bit of reanimator and a little bit of Frankenhooker. Frankenhooker. Of yeah, there's things. a lot of Frankenhooker in this. <laughs> like, I think I described it to someone when I was pitching it to them. It, it's it's kind of like if you crossed Reanimator with with uh, Frankenhooker, but made it way more feminist. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 <laughs> definitely. Because she's the main character. The, yeah. the three girls who make up the Frankenstein girl are the main character. And the surgeon that brings them together is more or less the antagonist. Well, one of the antagonists. One of the there's antagonists. A couple in there's, this movie. A, there's some spoilers in this movie. But he's definitely based on like a douche bro -y version of Jeffrey Combs's performance in Reanimator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's straight, <laughs> like, I, the thing is, is, I'm watching it and I'm like, I feel like this guy's channeling Ted Raimi. He's got a little bit of that yeah, too, yeah. <laughs> Like, like it feels like douchebag yuppie version of um of the reanimator. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, even even at one point he references the like, references his rich dad at one point like yeah and uh yeah this is clearly a comedy oh yeah it's one hundred percent a comedy and and you get that within like the first two minutes oh yeah that it is not only a comedy it's an insanely funny one I was laughing my ass off the whole time. Um, so if you if you like um those kinds of grisly, gory horror comedies like Reanimator or Frankenhooker. Yeah, if you like Hen and Lauder films. Hen and Lauder films, definitely. If you like those kind of movies, then this is totally up your alley. This is this is 100% one of those types of movies. Um, and, and here's the thing. Us mentioning the things that it's influenced by, like, the movie wears those influences on its sleeve. Oh, yeah, it, it doesn't hide them. Like, in one of the first, like, two minutes of the movie, you see the, the surgeon guy inject the uh, corpse of the girls... Uh, with green goo, just like yeah, just like reanimator. You know, it's like the inside of a fucking glow stick kind of shit. There's a know? point in which she, after she wakes up, where she's walking around the streets and making these weird like jerky motions, kind of like in Frankenhooker, <laughs> and having funny interactions with random people on the streets. The difference being, Frankenhooker was set in New York, and this is very much Los Angeles. Oh yeah, this is super LA. Yeah, <laughs> um, I liked how it was really interesting the way she moved and the way oh, she did everything. Because here's the thing. The character is technically three characters combined into one, but one of the actresses is playing the combined version of all of them. Yeah. And she's doing an amazing job. And the makeup on her is so good that you can actually see the parts that definitely look like the other characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you could tell that what part of what they did was they they definitely like took life casts and mm -hmm. then made a prosthetic. But in the shots where you're looking at it for a long time, it's obviously like CGI composited. Yeah, yeah, you can you can tell you can tell like s some of the effects if you look at it close enough, and, and it's also obvious which actress is playing the main character. Oh yeah, playing, yeah, yeah, very very the, much so because the main patchwork. So yeah, because they are well, let's yeah, let's put it this way: the uh, there are three different girls. One of them's super petite. The other two aren't, and the face of the main actress is the one that's most prominent in the patchwork. The movie has this really cool conceit, though, where it's constantly cutting between the arguments that are happening in her head and what her physical body is doing during those arguments. Yeah. Because each of them com controls a different part of the body. Like, one of them controls one of the legs, one of them controls one of the arms. And so, like, when they're having their arguments, like, the arms are doing the things that they're doing in s when they cut to the inside of the head. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, if one of them's, like, holding something or whatever, it'll cut and she'll be holding it in the, in the in reality. Um, but in the, in the head, only one of the girls is holding it. And so, yeah. But it's a really cool conceit because that means that one actress has to play both sides of that. One actress has to play being inside the head, being only one of them, and then has to play being all three of them at once. And that actress deserves a fucking medal because she rocked the oh, shit out of this. Oh, she did a great job, yeah. 
Absolutely. Like, she is just fucking captivating in both roles. And what's funny is that she's playing one of the least likable of the girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the main actress, like, who plays the, 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 main, the body... She plays the most boring of the three girls, well, and so you don't expect that she's going to come out with this weird phys physical performance. Well, each, each of the three girls are like a different type. Like you have the more the more ditzy cheerleader type, um, and then you have um, uh, the more mousy nerdy type, and then you have like the uptight rich yuppie, which is kind of yeah, what, yeah, yeah. Which is kind of what the uh, the, the main girl, uh, the, the, essentially our protagonist above all else. Um, what she is, but what what you what I kind of like about it is that the female friendship she kind of forms with the with the voices now inside her head, it it it, it, it loosens her up, you know, it like yeah. helps all of them, like it helps the ditzy one kind of realize that you know like she's kind of putting on a persona herself that's not yeah really her. yeah 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 that was you get to know all three of these characters pretty well throughout the movie. Um, we'll go into more of the girls when we get to the spoilers because there's some big spoilers there. Yeah. <laughs> well, one thing I think we should tell everybody is that there's an owl cat in this. There's an owl cat, yes. There's 100% there's the, an owl cat. Yeah. <laughs> to, to prove that this guy has like been doing this for a while, there's a cat that has been grafted with an owl. If you needed more of like Henenlotter inspiration, if you needed more oh God, examples yeah. of Henenlotter inspiration in this movie, um, there is more creatures than just the uh, the patchwork yeah. that um, this thing this guy has created. And one of them is the owl cat. So. Yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, I kind of like the different senses of humor throughout the movie. Like at some times you have like in like slapsticky physical comedy, kind of like Frankenhooker with like her trying to control the different parts of the body, but kind of fighting with herself. Yeah. Um, other times you have like really dry sense of humor. Like every time the British dude's around, like he's, yeah. he's just kind of like this normal dude, just kind of dryly responding to all the weirdness happening around him. <laughs> yeah. Cause like early on she runs into like a friend from college who is now like entering med yep. school and he's like a super nerdy guy. And she, she looks down on him and I'm like, Oh, Mr. Doctor, future doctor, wasn't yeah. good enough for you? Well, like, he's talking he... about his residency and shit. So, like, the the, the yep. times when he's just, like, kicking back, drinking or playing video games, that's, like, the only time he that's has That's his off. wind down time. But, but but to her, like, he's he's immature nerd guy, even though he's more mature than any of the other men oh, in yeah. this movie. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's, he's the most mature character in the movie, period. Yeah, absolutely. You know, he just happens to like playing Castlevania. But what know? I like about him is that his his performance is different than everyone else's. Some of them are doing more like realistic performances, like very like raw reactions and stuff like that. Some of them are doing like, I am in a B movie and I am acting like I'm in a B movie. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. the surgeon does that. Yeah, the surgeon is absolutely <laughs> one of those characters. The surgeon and the blonde yes. are very much, we're B movie characters. Um, Woo, whereas you know? uh, British dude is kind of acting like he's in a dry British comedy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, is that even though they're all doing different types of performances, it all works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Much whole. like much like the monster itself, it's a the movie it's is a patchwork. A patchwork. <laughs> That's a really good way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, I also like, uh, there are, there are more characters in this movie. Like, I really like the almost Joss Whedon-esque, uh, duo that are kind of oh, tracking the them two, the whole the movie. Oh, the two fucking corners? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they feel like, they feel like they're straight out of, like, a Joss Whedon movie. Just these two dudes that are going about their normal job killing women and patching them together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they're like, <laughs> oh, man, one of the bodies fucking escaped. Uh, I guess we gotta go get it. All right. One you of know. the actors looked really familiar to me, and it turns out that he was one of the Nazis in um, The Green Room. And so that's... Yeah. Uh, so I'm like, oh, that's why that guy looked familiar. All right, there we go. <laughs> um... So yeah, um, we watched this movie through Shudder. So if you have a Shudder subscription, then uh, that's where we recommend yeah. watching it. You can also rent it on Amazon Prime that's because that's how you watch Absolutely. Shudder movies. And I'll most likely leave a link in the description to an Amazon affiliate link to that. Um, and I haven't been saying this much lately, but like if you actually rent it through that Amazon link, then I get a kickback from that. So woohoo! Um, and, uh, I think we, we might as well start moving into the spoilers. Yeah, let's move into the spoilers, So, man. uh, but here are the spoilers. Alrighty then. <laughs> so, Owlcat is a great dynamite under the bed moment. Oh, yes. Yeah, Owlcat is introduced at the very beginning of the movie when she first wakes up, but then at the end of the movie, there's a point in which the surgeon releases the Owlcat. Releases Owlcats. the Owlcat, and it, it does what it does, and it's, he's like, I don't know what I was expecting. <laughs> <You know? laughs> 
the thing that was going through my head every time Alcat was on screen was I'm like, is is the inside of the Alcat's head like her head? So is yeah. there like an owl and a cat constantly arguing with each other inside that thing? <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Right. So, like, for the most part, there's not much I can spoil because the beginning of the movie kind of gives away that there's this surgeon guy who's patched them together. He's a crazy fucking mad scientist dude, a la reanimator. Yeah. Um, so the question of how they got this way is pretty straightforward at first. Yeah, but because turns there, out there actually is a twist. There is a twist to it. Yeah. There actually is a twist, and that's probably the main thing that can be spoiled. So, again, this is the spoiler section. If you don't want to be spoiled, stop now, because we're about to spoil the twist. So, it turns out, um, over the course of the movie, we find out that one of the girls, one of the three, is not being totally honest about the situation. Yeah, she's a serial killer. Yes, she is a serial killer. The nerdy mousy one, it turns out, is kind of like May from the movie May. She's a nerdy mousy person who really likes body parts and hands. And yeah. so she chops up, she she seduces men and then chops them up into pieces and then tries to like do stuff with their perfect parts because she's, she's obsessed, obsessed with perfection. But this leads her to hiring the surgeon to perform his controversial sur controversial surgeries on her to make her perfect. But in order to do his thing, he patches together body parts from other women. So she decides to take it upon herself to find women for that job. Yeah. So it, after forming this friendship between the three girls, by the end of the movie, they find out that the reason why they're in there isn't the surgeon, it's her. It was her seeking perfection and putting herself above these other two women. Yeah, because <laughs> it turns out while the the surgeon is clearly insane, yeah, <laughs> um, he's not necessarily a murderer. <laughs> well, he tended he uh, from what it sounded like, it sounded like most of the corpses he was using were ones he got from morgues and shit. Yeah, yeah. Like like the he was actually surprised when the corpses came in and they were fresh. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, it doesn't seem like he has too much of a moral quandary about this. He's just like, he's just not, the, he's just like, oh, well, all right. Like, he just doesn't care. Yep. Yep. Um, uh, but, but, uh, so, so they've been basically spending the whole movie hunting down all the men from the night before who wronged them. Like there's, there's the boyfriend who turns out is married and has another mistress and has been cheating and, and, and is not really a good boyfriend. They get yeah. revenge on him. There is these frat boys that were trying to get with the ditzy chick and bring her back to their place and trick her into being in a pornographic video in which they exploit her. Yeah. Um, and there is the um, uh, the douchebag dude who was trying to pick everyone up, pick, pick, pick up all the girls at the bar, even though her, his girlfriend was there. Yeah. There's that guy, that guy too. And so basically, most of the movie is them tracking down each of these guys trying to figure out who did this to them, who killed them and who gave them to the surgeon and who the fuck was the surgeon in the first place um and then at the end of the movie it turns out it was none of those guys it was the third woman <laughs> it was her the whole time and she was keeping it from them so <laughs> this leads into the climax of the movie in which the surgeon is there and they fought in all of his creatures and defeated them in a fucking dead alive style oh, yeah. gore bath yeah. <laughs> like just complete and utter bloodbath <laughs> and so and now she must fight the real enemy herself. herself. <laughs> <laughs> and what I kind of liked about it is that the, the movie, like I said earlier, like it's a more feminist version of like a Frankenhooker or a, a Reanimator storyline or a Bride of Reanimator storyline. Yeah, more likely. Yeah. Um, but at the end, it also acknowledges that the enemy is sometimes not just the men. Yeah, yeah. It was it was it was really cool that way. It's like like to be to be fair, the only male that this movie is sympathetic towards is the med student. Yes, uh, the the dude the dude who's actually the nice guy and is actually tries to help him the entire time because he's got a medical medical degree. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. He's 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 honestly trying to help. Although they play with you with that. Yes, they play with you with that because he's caught burning like the records that they steal, and it's because he's like, oh shit, I don't. Need he realizes what's going on, and so he tries to destroy the evidence because he's like, Sh th these two are grafted to this homicidal maniac. What does well, that mean, and what are we going to do? I don't think that was specifically his motivation. His main motivation was was that they were going to use those records because they were really upset when the, uh, when the um, address was burned off. Oh, they, they oh, were gonna. Good point. They yeah. were gonna use the records to track down whoever did this and continue the murder spree they were on. Yes, yeah, so he's and trying he's, to stop the murder. He was trying spree. to stop them yeah. from just being homicidal murderers. I don't think he was aware that she 
was on Good Center point. Lawyer. I didn't like his line at the <laughs> end, though, where he was like, it wasn't worth it. <laughs> yeah. Like... He ends up fucking dead at the yeah. hands of the surgeon yeah. when he tries to come and save them. The thing is, is that, like, I actually don't, like, think that, oh, he was a jerk, too, because of that. No, no, no. It really wasn't worth it. It really worth wasn't it. worth it. <laughs> you know, like... Everything he goes through to get to the end to save these girls only turns out that one of them was a homicidal murderer the whole time. Like, it wasn't... Yeah. It wasn't totally worth it. That being said, uh, my favorite scene in this movie, uh, and there's a lot of favorite scenes in this movie, like the fucking frat boy rampage is up there, and like, (laughs) there's a lot of fucking great scenes in this movie. My favorite scene in this movie, though, is when uh, two of the three girls really want to get with the the med student dude. Yeah. (laughs) But one of them doesn't. And this leads into a crazy fucking kinky ass fucking fuck fest in his bedroom where their arm is like falling off and shit yeah. while they're fucking him. And he has no idea what he's getting into and they're like strapping him to the bed. Yeah. <laughs> and like sticking their like broken finger into his mouth. <laughs> that scene was simultaneously one of the funniest things I've seen in the movie, but it was also like the most fucked up. <laughs> well, like, it was, it was like, it, it reminded me of, like, Vampire Girl versus Frankenstein. Yeah. That kind of stuff, yep. you know? Like, it's like, oh, man, you really thought about this scene, you know? <laughs> it, was, it made me realize that one of the things that Frankenhooker was missing was that it needed more sex scenes. Yeah, it only has... It has it nudity. Has, like, nudity, but it, it only has one sex scene, there's kind of. There's more nudity in Frankenhooker than there is in this. In fact, I don't even think you actually get to see her tits or anything. No. But... What this movie does have is just a flat-out sex scene. Yeah. Which Frankenhooker has the one scene in which she electrifies the dude. Yeah. <laughs> but it's Where she, like, electrifies <laughs> the guy who was, like, in the Charmin commercials yep. or whatever. whatever. Um, so in that regard, I actually kind of like this movie even more than Frankenhooker. Um, which is saying a lot, because Frankenhooker is one of my favorite films. <laughs> Like, this movie does a lot of that things that that movie did, but even better. The only thing I will say is that Frankenhooker had a lot more nudity, but I understand for this movie why they didn't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a different different type of film. This, is, this, is, this movie is, um, this movie is literally about someone fighting uh, the exploitation of women over the course of the movie. So it would have made less sense to just be like tit fest. Oh yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. It would be it would be counter to the narrative. Yeah, if, it would it would have undermined the story. Yeah, like the scene in which the dude is trying to like trick the ditzy girl into getting in a porno pro- pornographic film with him. Yeah, I don't think that the the impact of that scene would have worked if we were oogling over her tits the whole time. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, given the narrative of this movie, I understand why it didn't. Hey, do that. he's a really good guy, man. He's a really good guy. Really good guy, man. Oh man, I was so happy when she killed that dude. <laughs> That was great. Oh man. So yeah, if you if you like Frankenstein like stories about stitched together monsters that gain life and they have no idea what the fuck is happening. If you like um uh stories about uh homicidal female friendships, um if you like Frankenhooker, if you like Bride of Reanimator, I I can't see any reason why you wouldn't want to watch Patchwork. Oh yeah, no, this is a this is a great movie. This is fantastic. It's hilarious. It delivers everything you could possibly want. I just I, I give it two thumbs up. And uh, again, it's on Shutter and Amazon, so yeah. check it out. It there. has like an amazing amount of narrative cohesion. Yes, that's also true. You yeah, know, like one hundred percent. Like the thing is, the movie is not told one hundred percent literally. We're constantly cutting back to the present, but for a lot of the movie, we're also cutting back to each girl's night before. Yeah, like each girl's night before they were hit over the head or they were hit by the truck or whatever that caused them to end up being uh, stitched together, um, and they're kind of piecing together their own memories too because. They're kind of a jumbled mess as a result right. of being in one head. Um, but it's very obvious that the that the crazy girl has known the whole time. Like she, yeah. she's she she knew exactly what was going on because she's the one who killed them all. She's the one who hit them with the truck. She's the one who hit him over the head and, and stalked them. Because their bodies had perfect parts that she could stitch onto herself that she wanted. Yep. So she really is May in a certain sense. Yeah. <laughs> And with all that said, uh, where can they find you, Count Jackula? Well, you can find me on Twitch uh, at twitch.tv slash count underscore Jackula. Um, I stream most days at around 6 p.m. and definitely every Thursday and Sunday at 6 p.m. True. Pacific Standard Time, by the way. And you can follow me on Twitter, which if you want to be alerted of the stream, but don't want to have to like be browsing Twitch all the time, that is a good place to go. They usually post it around there. Yeah, yeah we usually post it on there. It's like at 
account underscore Jackula on Twitter. So, uh, how about you? Y'all know me. I'm the Horror Guru. You can find me at the Horror Guru on Twitter, on Twitch, on Facebook. Just look up the Horror Guru or Blood Splattered Cinema, and I'll be there. Be sure to like, comment, and to subscribe to this video. And if you haven't already, ring that notification bell so that you're notified of my videos immediately upon their upload. And if you would like to help out either of our channels more directly, then be sure to check out our Patreon pages. And remember, if you decide to go the Patreon route, even a dollar a month can go a long way. And uh, I gotta say, I'm pretty proud of myself. I managed to not spill water on my on me on the, during this vlog, unlike my last vlog where I did it like three times. <laughs> <laughs> so I count that as a win. And with that said, go watch Patchwork and uh, leave a comment below letting us know what you thought. And uh, peace out.